talking about this cathode which are very high energy photons about say 10 kV onwards and what are the uses of this so before I start with to give you a little bit of motivation uh, let me tell you a story suppose it's night time in this room and I and I ask you how many chairs are there this is night time, there is no light, nothing is on. Okay, what you will do, you will come inside, just switch or uh, turn on the switch and then automatically you can see that there is light in this room and then you can count the chairs. So this is just a very good example of detector. In this case, the detector is your eye and the source is the light bulb. The same thing which he, uh, Dr. Hasra also mentioned, a different part of it. So suppose there is something wrong with, with my body or with anyone's body. Now how do you diagnose, diagnose it? One of the ways is to enter a very thin optical cable, very thin, which should be efficient enough to tell you what is going on inside. This is one of the ways. Another way is very interesting. Suppose you have O, o blood, O blood. Okay, then I will take a sample of the O blood group and put it, put on this, on this blood a radioactive source which will decay in 2 hours radioactive source which will decay in 2 hours and then I will take, a, take it in a syringe and put it in your, in your blood stream what will happen afterwards? what will happen is that all the radioactive nuclei which are injected in your blood stream they will be circulating throughout your body and then what? It's just like the same scenario which I have already mentioned. Earlier, your body you could not see much. If you use the X-ray from outside, it is just from the surface, as Dr. Hasra also mentioned. But now, the radioactive nucleus is inside your body, in all your blood veins. So they are decaying. And during the decay, if during the decay they emit gamma rays, then you put photon detectors, gamma detectors outside your body, and then you can find out the gamma rays and then how the gamma rays are emitted, their intensity, their energy, how much they have been absorbed during this process of coming out from your body. This whole analysis tells you about the blood arteries and the different organs where the blood is going on. So this is just a very simple example of application of photonics and nuclear physics in medical science. Okay. Just uh, motivation. Okay. So now, good. What after that? Now, from my body, now I go beyond the earth. Well, you all know that there are solar, that we live in solar system. There are so many planets. We have our beloved sun, our nearest star. Okay. And but that's not the end of the story. There are many other celestial objects in the world even beyond, say neutron stars, white dwarfs, black holes, you don't have to consider what physics is there right now. Just think that, think and try to feel the excitement that come on, it is just not us on the earth only, there are so many things outside the earth. So the next question is, as he also mentioned during his talk, that suppose we have got a hot furnace and you want to measure the temperature or in other way girls look here don't talk or in other way you want to know what is going on inside the furnace a uh, quantitative question is what is the temperature of the surface furnace but the qualitative is what is going on inside the furnace so you use a rate, pyrometer or some device what, that, what does that do it detects the photons and you have already got a calibration. If you see this color, it corresponds to this temperature. If you see that color, it corresponds to that temperature. So on and so forth. This is a very simple example. But there are so many celestial objects outside our Earth. And they are still being formed. There are various stars which are formed from the protostar still being formed they will slowly die down during decay 
During their death, it could be a neutron star, white dwarf, or graphon, whatever. Now, the interesting thing is, what is the process going on? So, obviously, neither I nor you are going to go there with something to do the measurement, right? So, what we are going to do? This is similar to the non-evasion technique in their medical physics. We don't do anything ourselves directly. We are physicists. We are clever beings. We don't dirty our hands. What we do? We inspect whatever is coming out from that star or celestial object. Be it gamma rays, be it neutrino, whatever. And then through appropriate detector, we measure their properties, say energy, intensity, state of polarization, whatever. And then we analyze and make predictive models. And then again, we compare the predictions of the model again with further set of experiments. And then again we proceed and, and then this is how we have known what is going on both inside our human body and also outside the earth. So now, since I have been talking about the gamma rays, this, what I have shown here, is the interior satellite revolving outside the Earth. Its primary job is to detect the gamma rays which are emitted from the various radioactive sources. Okay, let's come inside the Earth. Now, inside the Earth, I have just shown you two similar examples. Okay. This is the Griffin Detector Array at Triumph, Canada, where I worked three years back. And uh, this is an Indian National Gamma Array. This was operational in New Delhi few years back. These are, these big things, you will notice something. These big things, what are these? These are detectors. They will detect the gamma ray. Now, if the energy is high, in this regard, if the photon energy is very high, then I need a very large active volume to detect, to capture entirely the gamma ray. And so, we have this large volume detectors. I am not going to talk about the history of the germanium detector and whatsoever. Just take it for granted that you are just going. There are so many information around about the detectors, various types of detectors. I am not going to tell you about the history of all of that. Just concentrate on one particular example and take this thrill with you when you leave for me today. That's what I want. Okay, so today I will be talking about... <coughs> The composite detectors, there are three types, the Glover, the Cluster and the SPI spectrometer. Now this looks like a honeycomb, composite, many pieces together. And each individual, from each individual detector, I get a signal and then I summarize and then analyze the signal and get the entire picture. This is the entire, this is the idea behind the composite detectors. Now, Okay, again.